many of us have used resources in the past, or we just take a little brief uh, walk, you know, into the past here. And so I want you to think about how we are have been using, how students have used resources to help them with information, especially again in whether it's in ELA classes or history classes and what have you. And so way back when, I remember using uh, Cliff Notes. I don't know if any of you here are old enough to remember Cliff Notes, but I do remember uh, our teachers had a stack. I remember our English teachers had a stack and would just say it outright. I know that I know what's in here too. If you use the information that is here and you plagiarize, this is what's going to happen. So the teachers knew and we knew that they knew. They didn't say don't use it. They, they did say that, right? But they did say, hey, but be careful if you do and how you use it. So of course, you know, we had Cliff Notes, we had Spark Notes, we had online sources and resources that we can turn to. What else can students use to help them with material? Well, some teachers feel that no, students should not use, you know, translators. They should just, you know, and I know this because sometimes my own kids, like, you know, they're taking a Spanish class and they're like, how do you say this? It's a tool, right? Just like a pencil, right? There's times when we should and times when we shouldn't. So how are we using these kind of this kind of technology? Some might argue that things like spell check have ruined us, that we can't spell anymore. Whereas others say, no, actually, that's good. We don't have to be, you know, relying on our memory how to spell that. Let's just spell check, right? So again, how are we using these programs? How do we feel about students using Grammarly? Do they need to know the rules or do they need to see, okay, oh, why did I get that wrong? So, so many programs out there. I might even argue that ChatGPT might be leveling the playing field, especially for students who were able to have academic tutors, students who have relied on that little person, somebody there next to them telling them, hey, this is written right, this is not so good. So, again, uh, there are different opinions of how, you know, ChatGPT can be used. So, Today, we're gonna to be sharing a little bit about that. All right, what else? So what are experts saying? What are other people in our educational field saying about ChatGPT? So I just went ahead and got some headlines and some of the headlines here. So this is from Ed Week, and if you could see just the date here, very recent. They're saying, how can we coexist with technology, right? So that's going to be the kind of the overall message. And I'm just gonna read here for anybody who's driving and listening. It says teachers should not be worried about whether ChatGPT will disrupt learning. Instead, educators should spend their time on how they can better train students to utilize artificial intelligence for human intelligence augmentation. So, you know, we're hearing that this technology is going to change the way students are learning and how we are teaching. Are we ready for that? What does that look like? Here's another one. I was just at the Kate Conference, a California Convention of Teachers of English, but this is coming out of the National Convention of Teachers of English. And they're also saying, let's just work with it, right? And so here it is, 19 ways to use ChatGPT in the classroom. Whereas another one, here's again, a news article from the Science Magazine, right? How is, uh, how is it changing our world? Again, they're seeing it as a way that, uh, as an opportunity, right? And, but yet we have to have this conversation with our students. Uh, what else? Here's another article, right? Uh, uh, giving advice to academics and how we can use it. Some people are saying we should harness the potential, right? But also know about the risks. Uh, and I, I like how it says here that maybe we shouldn't uh, panic too much, right? And here's another one. And this was an interesting one because this one uh, I got from one of our IB teachers saying that the International Baccalaureate Program actually came out and said, no, we are not going to block Jet GPT. We are going to work with it. And so in fact, here is the actual quote from, and, and this is uh, again, from the head of assessment and principles and practice for the IB program. And it says, he says, it's an extraordinary opportunity. And I'm just gonna read what it says here. When AI can essentially write an essay at the touch of a button, we need our pupils to master different skills, such as understanding if the essay is any good, or if it has mixed context, or has it used biased data, or even incorrect data, by the way, right? Or is it lacking creativity? So these will be far more important skills than just writing an essay. So the assessment task we set will need to reflect this. 
So even our assessments and the type of prompts we're giving, might, we might need to go back and say, hey, how can I change this up? I'm adding these hyperlinks here. And again, I will send you this, uh, this PowerPoint, this Google slide deck, so that you can, at your own time and pace, take a look at those articles. You know, see what they're saying here. This down here, harnessing ChatGPT, is actually a video of coming out of uh, the IB program. So it's an interesting, because it even shows how a teacher is use, creating a lesson plan, integrating ChatGPT. Okay, what else do we have? Um, one of the things that we definitely should think about, um, and I, I would, you know, maybe advocate that we do this as soon as possible, and that is to update the syllabus, to have a little, to take time to talk about ethics in the class. Um, what does that look like? Um, some people might argue that, you know, chat GPT is not plagiarism because it's being done on the spot, right? Others might argue it is because it's not the student's words, right? So again, whatever your philosophy is, there are syllabi out there already made that you can take a look at. So again, here's the hyperlink, here's another hyperlink. Um, but to have, so that you're not getting, you know, kind of punishing kids for something that you kind of implied but didn't really say, right? And here's another thing, we don't wanna create a, an atmosphere of suspicion, right? Uh, where we're like trying to, I gotcha type of, of feeling in the classroom. Like, I don't think this is really written by the student. I'm gonna, I think if we say it out front and talk to them about what's out there, it, it's best for everyone. Right. In fact, some schools and universities are telling students to cite, to actually write it down and say, I cited artificial intelligence. And, and they're showing how they're doing that. Again, these are things to mull over, to think about. Uh, maybe again, either individually as cohorts or in your department. Okay, what else? All right. One of the big fears, of course, is that students are just going to rely on this technology and that they will not do some authentic writing. So here's a quote about plagiarism. And I like it, I just kind of here to, to read it. It says, if you want to make students not plagiarize, or in this case, not use things like ChatGPT, you simply need students that are passionate about their assignments, are confident in their skills, and have the resources to complete the task that they are given. So I'm gonna leave you with a lot of different little resources. So I'm just gonna skip through here. I want you to think about, you know, if we're constantly giving students just that five paragraph essay or only the argumentative essay, that a lot of times they don't wanna turn and do these assignments, they're not feeling quite connected to the topics. I want you to think about their world. How are they expressing their thoughts? And one of the ways is social media, text messages, blogging and blogging, YouTube videos, TikTok, right? Um, posting on blogs and so forth. So they know they can get their words out. And sometimes in our classroom, if they feel they're just writing an essay for one person, for the teacher, they don't feel as connected. And so how can we maybe amplify their voice in different ways where it's not always so restricted? So opening up a little bit. So we're gonna be showing you how you can use ChatGPT to kind of expand that repertoire of writing. All right. I'm going to leave this for you to explore. All of these are hyperlinks. This is if you do not want to bring in Chat GPT and you want kids to work on that writing process. These are all different ways that you can get students to write. And I'm not saying just bring out paper and pen. We're hopefully nobody leaves here thinking we're just going to ban the internet or stop using computers. Don't do that. Right? We don't want to go that way. We need to prepare them for that future. And that future does include lots of technology. And so a lot more collaborative writing or a lot more discussion-based uh, can really get that, that type of writing skills out. Okay, uh, and finally, I'm gonna leave you with this. This is from Kelly Gallagher. I was at, again, at this wonderful PD conference where they talked about writing and why students might not wanna write, right? And why they resort to things like this. And one of the best quotes I heard was the best writing teacher is writing. Get them to write, not just write to show them what they know not just to summarize the book, not just to, you know, answer that prompt, but to write out of their heart. And so here's a Padlet and the link is down below of just so many resources of getting kids to just write quick writes and journal writing and passionate writing. And so again, that's one of the best ways to get students to find their voice and want to publish what they have to say. Okay, so that's pretty much my little part. I'm going to pass the baton over to Teresa and Ricardo, 